Chapter 1 of Heart of Steel, A Dread Island Tale. We join now the famous Flying Franklin family as they continue along their globe-trotting adventure through the skies. All is not well above the ocean waves, however, as lightning strikes during a violent storm that has suddenly come upon the area. With little time to spare, the Franklins, joined by Hart, their trusted robotic flight engineer and bodyguard, are forced to make a grave decision. I don't think she's going to last much longer. The engines are failing, and the storm is only getting stronger. No, no. Hart and I can fix this. We just need time. We don't have time. The turbulence is too strong. This plane is going to crash. Hard, analyze the motors. Can she be saved? Indicators show near certainty that the aircraft is not salvageable. Failure of flight systems is unavoidable and imminent. I recommend evacuation as soon as possible. I think... I think I can save it. I have to try at least. But we need to make sure the children are safe first. Are we going to jump? From this high? You are, Anna, my dear. Hart will take you and your little brother to safety. Quick, get your emergency parachutes on. You too, Frida. Are you insane? I'm not leaving you, Aurelio. Our only chance is if we work together. But you must go with the children. Who knows what they could encounter? Hart will look after them. That is their duty. And we've trusted them with the children's care countless times. Why can't Hart save the plane? I thought they were supposed to protect all of us. I apologize, young Emilio. I am not capable of repairing the damaged fuselage, nor is my programming capable of restarting the engines. I recommend you listen to your father's course of action. But... but... Listen to me, little miss. I'm going to need you to be very brave. I'm not scared. I just don't want to go without you. I know, my dear, but without this aircraft, there is no possibility of getting home. Your mother and I are the best darn pilots the sky has ever seen. And if anyone can get this flying again, it's us. For now, you must go. Hart, take the children. How long do we have left? Analysis indicates that the plane will crash in less than five minutes. Thank you, Hart, my faithful companion. Take care of them. Of course, Mr. Franklin. I have secured the children, and we are ready to depart. Preparing for ejection in 10, 9, 8. I don't want to leave you! We will find you again. We promise. 7, 6, 5, 4, Anna, 3, Emilio, 2, we love 1. You. Hart holds the shrieking children as the trio bravely jump from the descending plane. The air is turbulent and strong, but Hart willfully protects the young Franklins as Master Aurelio instructed. Parachute deployed. Now enabling wind-resistant plating. It is best you avoid looking down. Look, Emilio! We're... We're flying! Ah! Don't let go of me, Hart! You are completely safe. If my systems were to fail, you also are equipped with an emergency parachute. Please, enjoy the descent. Ow! I can see that there are no major injuries from the fall. Of course I'm not hurt. I'm tough. Look, Anna. Look hard. The plane. What? Dad? They couldn't save the aircraft. But maybe they jumped with their parachutes before the crash. Don't worry, Emilio. They promised to see us again. I hope so. Where are we, Hart? We have arrived on a piece of land locally known as Dread Island. Please keep an eye open for threats while I analyze our surroundings. That doesn't sound very good. My scan indicates that the ground here is stable and that there is no immediate danger. A slight chance of rain in approximately five hours. Recommend that you seek shelter as soon as possible. This will also give me the chance to recharge before we explore further. What about when we get hungry? 
If we head into the jungle, we might be able to find some wood to make a shelter, and a lake for fresh water, and maybe some food for Emilio, too. Affirmative, Miss Anna. However, we must be careful. There is no certainty on what we will encounter. Maybe an attack by big, scary monsters. I'm thinking a huge wolf, or maybe a group of evil goblins. Don't be silly, Emilio. That's so unrealistic. But maybe we'll find a giant three-headed sea snake with a million teeth. These scenarios are unlikely. Regardless, in a situation of that caliber, I am programmed to protect you. I still think we should explore the jungle. Maybe Mom and Dad landed in there. This is also unlikely. Well, I know it's worth a shot. What are we waiting for? Come on, let's go! As the jungle wildlife roars and the storm begins to subside overhead, the real journey begins for the unusual trio. With dangerous, unexplored territory to discover and only the family's robotic companion to guard them, what could possibly lie ahead for our castaways? Find out next time on Heart of Steel, a Dread Island tale. Chapter 2 of Heart of Steel, A Dread Island Tale. Having set up a small shelter in the forest, our heroes decide to explore. They spend some time looking for supplies, and more importantly, for the missing Flying Franklins. Their travels eventually take them through thick foliage and towards the very outskirts of the forest. We've been walking for hours and we haven't found anything. It has been one hour and 37 minutes since we left the shelter. We have encountered many varieties of local flora and fauna. We found a few nuts and berries, but nothing we can make a meal with. And the animals keep running away from us. Noise levels and unnecessary chatter from all present are startling local wildlife into hiding. And current supplies are not yet deemed fit for consumption. Young Emilio is also tired from walking. We could use natural materials to construct a trap with current gatherings as bait. That's not a bad idea, Hart. Let's find a good spot to set up our traps. Then we can go hide. Anna leads the way through the forest trail, happily pushing aside leaves and branches until... Do you hear that? It's coming from over there! It's the ocean. We're above a beach. We could catch some fish, or go foraging for crabs in rock pools, or... Hey, there's smoke over there. Is that a fire? Yeah. And it looks like people. Maybe they can help us. We have not yet discerned if they are a threat. We should return to shelter before they spot us. We won't know unless we try. You can stay here if you want. I'm going to check it out. We should go too, so she doesn't get in trouble. Come on, Hart. Anna scurries down the cliffside excitedly as Emilio and Hart share a look before they follow. The trio make their way down the cliff and approach the camp on the beach. Hart keeps Emilio close while Anna rushes off ahead. Who goes there? Huh? A, a kid? Uh, hi. My family crashed here and we're lost and hungry. I don't suppose you have any food to spare? Your family, huh? How many of you are there? Not too much to spare here, you see. Well, there's my brother and I. We flew in our parents' plane. Oh, and Hart! Young Anna, please do not go off on your own. They've got an assault, Tron. What should we do? Let's take them to the bus. They'll know what to do. Wow, you do look hungry. We've got a place down the beach where we can get you some food there. We do not know their numbers or intentions. This could be a trap. Oh, Hart, you worry too much. We can handle ourselves. They did say we could get food there. It appears there is no convincing you of the danger. Our heroes are led to an old, creaking tanker further down the beach and brought into the stranger's stronghold to speak to their leader. We don't normally see kids on this island, and with an assault on the booth. 
You should join us. We could use good help like that. We're looking for a way off the island. We just need a little help. I don't think you understand. I wasn't asking. As suspected, these strangers are hostile. <coughs> Put me down! Let me go! Get off me! I wouldn't do anything crazy if I were you. Wouldn't want anything happening to the children, now would we? Do not hurt the children. I will comply. That's right. Good little robot. Take the kids to the boats and get the robot to Nate. We'll reprogram them to work for us. No! Leave Hart alone! Anna struggles against the pirate's grasp, furiously pulling at his arms and stomping her feet. Emilio, emboldened by Anna's fighting and his desire to help Hart, begins kicking and biting at his would-be captor. The shock of the bite causes the pirate to drop Emilio, who spryly springs into action, grabbing the nearest sturdy branch to fight back. Where do you think you're going? Here! Watch out! Got it! They're just kids! Grab them already! Children, get down! With the children providing a distraction, Hart readies their weapons for combat. At Hart's shout, both children duck for cover and scurry below some tables. Once they're out of harm's way, Hart deftly deals with the pirate duo before turning their attention to the pirate's leader, incapacitating them with a well-placed strike. We should leave before they wake up or reinforcements arrive. Don't need to tell me twice. Come on, Emilio. I think we lost them. Hart told you it was a bad idea, and we still didn't get any supplies. For everyone's safety, we should stay together from now on. All right, Hart. Let's get going. Together. Narrowly escaping the clutches of the pirates, our heroes venture forth further into the jungle. What dangers lurk ahead for the trio? Find out next time on Heart of Steel, a Dread Island Tale. Chapter 3 of Heart of Steel, A Dread Island Tale. Now we return to our island of mystery, where the Franklin children, Anna and Emilio, and Hart, their unlikely robot caretaker, have earned a brief reprieve from their troubles. Safe for now, they confront a new problem. Children, it appears you both require sustenance. You can say that again. I'm starving. Hey, look! Those berries! I recognize them from my Pioneer Scout Manual. Wait, Anna. I must analyze those before you consume them. Mm. What is that? The three stand in silence for a moment. Emilio, in particular, is transfixed by the noise. We should go see. No, Emilio. Not before we get some food. Uh... Uh... Oh. It appears I was correct. That plant is poisonous to humans. Wait patiently, Anna. I will synthesize an antidote. The sound blows on the wind again. Emilio, as if in a trance, stumbles after it through the foliage, oblivious to his sister's plight. Hart, preoccupied with treating Anna's ailment, does not notice the young boy leaving. Little Emilio follows the noise through the jungle, past razor-sharp leaves and venomous vermin, to a rocky clearing above the ocean's edge. There, he comes face to face with the Skull in Stone, an ominous, skull-shaped cavern, staring back at him with empty eyes. Enthralled, he steps inside. Meanwhile, Hart has concocted an antidote, and Anna is coming too. Phew. Oh, thanks again, Hart. You really saved my bacon there. Good thing you didn't eat those berries, Emilio. Wait, Emilio? Hart, Emilio's gone. This is a miscalculation. Quick, we have to find him. Inside the skull, Emilio descends. Jiminy, how far does it go? The 
ground cracks and crumbles as a great fissure opens beneath Emilio's feet. He slips and slides down a rocky shaft, landing with a hard thump on a perilous outcropping. Oh, that smarts. Oh. Is that lava? Wow. Oh, oh, it's getting closer. He makes a mad dash, springing from rock to rock, but still he can find no safety. Uh-oh. Now what? Emilio, over here! Hart, we found him! On my way. Anna, Hart! Hart, he's in danger. Isn't there anything you can do? I have a solution, Miss Franklin. Hart takes aim, and from the side of their forearm pops a grappling hook. They fire it from their cup, and it pierces the side of the rock below Emilio, creating a tightrope across the chasm. Balance. Balance. Rope. Balance. Ah, I'm across. Like a true Franklin. The eruption is still in progress, children. The lava will reduce us to scrap parts if we do not get moving soon. Then let's go! Quick, through this crack in the wall! We can all just fit! Quick, quick! The trio squeezes through the crevice and out of the volcanic cavern. It shakes and collapses behind them as they make a mad dash to safety. When they finally stop to take a breath, they find themselves in a sunny grotto, warmly lit by the tropical sun. No threats detected. We appear to be safe, for the moment. Phew. One thing after another, huh? Emilio, why did you run off like that? We were worried. I'm sorry, sis. I, I just don't know. I heard that sound. I had to follow it. That sound? Emilio looks to Anna, and Anna to Emilio. Together, they look back to the cavern below, transfixed. The sound has a power over them, but Hart reaches out with their steely arms and turns them away. The robot guides them out of earshot onto the shores of Dread Island once again. Chapter 4 of Heart of Steel, A Dread Island Tale. Seven days after their marooning, we find our trinity of wayward castaways making their way through the little explored northern region of the island. The need for fresh food has driven them ever further in their expeditions, and as luck would have it, they found a shallow pond teeming with bright fish. The weather was warm and the wind was mild, although young Anna had grown seasoned and wise enough to know that fine weather meant little for a fine day on Dread Island. Hard. Great job finding this place. Look at all these fish. We can hang them up at camp to dry and we'll eat well for days. Anna, it does appear safe, but we must be careful. We cannot grow complacent on this island. Well, we've got you to look out, don't we, Hart? Say, why don't you tell us some jokes while we fish? Yeah, some jokes, Hart. Never trust atoms. They make up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us another, Heart. Doctor, there's a patient online one that says he's invisible. Well, tell him I can't see him right now. You sure got some good ones, Heart. <laughs> Franklin, children, my sensors are picking up an energy signal in the vicinity. It appears harmless, but I cannot determine its location. The signal originates a short distance west of our position. What is it, Hart? Should we go find out? Easy, Emilio. Not so fast. Let's just take a quick look, okay, Hart? It may be something useful. I am not reading immediate danger, but I advise you proceed with extreme caution. Hart, Anna, and Emilio quickly set off, following the robot's sensor readings. Through hanging leaves and twisting vines they search, Hart's machinery carefully tracking the unknown signature. 
After a time, the thick vegetation gives way to a clearing that ends against a tall cliff of stone. Hart and the children find themselves at the threshold of a large entranceway leading deep into the cliff. A trapezoidal doorway twice as tall as a man. Set into the sides of the portal are strange devices, each containing a large flat disk of a strange material and fastened on a swiveling mount. Look at those things! Wow, Hart! Who could have built something this peculiar out of these big stones? And that device? This construction contains the source of the energy readings. My scans indicate these structures are over a thousand years old, and... Anna, I am afraid it looks like Emilio is not waiting for further analysis. Anna, look! Emilio, wait! Don't touch anything! Before he can be stopped, Emilio has pushed on the nearest of the odd metal devices along the side of the doorway. It spins far more easily than its ancient appearance would suggest. Upon coming to the end of its spin, the disc catches the beams of the bright afternoon sun. Anna's eyes stare in amazement as the beam jumps down the hallway, illuminating it as bright as moonlight. As the sunbeam travels, it meets similar attached fixtures down the hall and fills the entire structure with light, bouncing from disc to disc. Well now, isn't that something, Hart? Oh, father would have loved to see such clever engineering. Well, I'm the one who figured it out, Anna. Correct, Emilio. However, I recommend increased discretion. Anna, the source of the signal is close. My sensors have determined we could potentially use this energy to recharge my power cells. All right, well, it's worth a quick look. But like you said, Hart, Let's proceed with extreme caution. Carefully, they follow the strangely angled hallway deep into the unknown. Finally, the long hall comes to an end, the sunlit discs revealing a large, circular rotunda. Dust swirls in the air, lit by the reflected sunbeams. In the center of the room, where the shafts of light converge, stands a strange stone pedestal and a vibrant cut jewel, deep blue in color. The size of a lady's slipper, it sits splendidly on top of the pedestal, wrapped in intricate bindings of metal and curiously cut stone. Goodness, that jewel is beautiful, isn't it? Have you ever seen one like it? Anna, this mineral appears to be able to absorb energy from the sun and store it. It seems to hold a significant capacitor charge. We can take it, right? Finders keepers, you know. Well, I suppose so. I don't see anyone around here using it for anything. Anna, the item is useful to us. However, its origin is unknown, and I advise we... Proceed with extreme caution. Proceed with extreme caution. Okay, Hart, we will. With that... Anna advances, reaching out and pulling the dark, enchanting item from its cradle on top of the pedestal. With a rumble, the pillar of curiously cut stone and metal bindings begins to turn, spinning on strange axes, like the workings of a mad clock. It rapidly sinks into the floor, and then the ground itself begins to descend with it, dropping down into darkness where the illuminating beams cannot reach, the looming pit quickly expands by concentric rows towards the Franklin children. We must evacuate this area immediately. What on earth was that voice? Emilio, come on, now! Hart! Hana! Let's go! Hart! The whole floor is dropping away! Something's down there! The children and Hart rush back up the hallway, and every moment, another row of floor drops away, mere steps behind them. The robot grabs both children by the scruff of their coats and charges up and out of the bizarre collapsing tunnel. They stop and turn yards away as a dust cloud belches out of the entrance. Behind them, looming in darkness, some great invisible terror slowly grinds its way closer to the doorway, bellowing its stony refrain. Heart, it's coming! Do something! Anna, 
Carter, please keep Amelia back. I will engage my defenses. Get it, Hart! Get it! Hart unleashes its powerful laser attack, blasting the cliffside above the stone entryway. Massive chunks of rock face break away and fall, collapsing inward on the great stone gate. A million tons of rubble fill the space where the strange hallway once stood. A safe distance away, Hart, Anna, and Emilio brush themselves off and observe the pile of stone where the curious architecture once stood. Hart, what could that possibly have been? Something was coming out of that dark cavern. Who built that place? Unknown. Construction remains unidentifiable. No more jewels, Anna. You're right, Emilio. No more jewels, no matter how interesting they are. For that matter, no more going into any dark chambers. I think there's more strange things afoot here than we know. With the lurking danger of the strange temple behind them, buried under tons of stone by Hart's laser, the three travel back towards their humble camp as the sun begins to set. Despite all they have learned and overcome so far, it seems there are still many secrets yet to be discovered on Dread Island. Chapter 5 of Heart of Steel, A Dread Island Tale. Pressing forward and hoping to avoid any further strange encounters on Dread Island, the Franklin children, Anna and Emilio, and their robotic companion, Hart, pause before a forest so dark that no sunlight reaches the ground. Anna, what are you doing? Well, this forest is as dark as a cave. So I'm taking this branch and combining it with some of our scrap cloth and pitch from that tree over there to make... A torch! Exactly! A torch! Anna, my systems should provide illumination sufficient for our travels. But your light won't keep woodland creatures away. So the torch can also be a weapon! Hart leads the way into the forest. Followed by Anna holding her torch, with Emilio brandishing a smaller branch like a saber. As they reach the depths of the forest, it grows eerily quiet. Are you sure there's no way around the forest? The forest is the straightest path, and the best option for restocking the food supplies needed for continued survival. Uh-oh! Anna's scared! You should be too! The birds stopped making noises, and birds don't go quiet without a reason. It does seem the avian creatures have gone silent. I will begin analyzing any threats. I have determined there are three potential threats in the vicinity. Three? Only three? Amelia, the nearest threat is the low-grade irritant in your plant sword. My hand does feel kind of itchy. Heart, why didn't you say something sooner? Emilio, drop that stick! Now that it's been upgraded to a chemical weapon? No way! I'll just use my sleeve to hold it. Why would you... It's all over your clothes now. The next nearest threat appears to be the large life form over there. The robot's light moves to reveal a strange bear staring at the group. It stands upright on two legs and makes a threatening posture before disappearing. Where'd it go? Yeah, where is it? I've always wanted to fight a bear. Threat number two has been eliminated by threat number three. Hart raises their light upward, where a giant spider hangs from a thick ceiling of webs and spins the unconscious bear into a cocoon. Big, big spider. At a length of 18 feet, your assessment of big does seem correct, Anna. Anna, give me your torch! What? Why? Fueled by fighting spirit, Emilio grabs the torch and flings it at the spider with all his might. 
The torch, of course, falls well short of the spider, landing in the nearby brush and setting it aflame. The flames snake their way up the vegetation on a nearby tree, closing in on the blanket of webs above. Yes! It's still gonna make it to the spider! Hand its web! We need to get out of here now! Anna, Amelia, stay close as I analyze the best options for your safety. Stop analyzing and start running! Reacting to Anna's words, the metallic caretaker picks up a child with each arm as they sprint deeper into the forest. A moment later, the webbing ignites and a flash shoots overhead, leaving our explorers beneath a lake of flames. Oh, neat! Are those, are those flaming spiders falling all around us? The falling creatures do resemble arthropods with a burning characteristic. Look! The big spider's following us! And it's also on fire! That's even neater! As Hart dodges the smaller spiders, the giant spider gives chase, getting ever so closer until... Ah, it stopped. Why is it shaking like that? Hey, Anna, check it out. Its insides are like warm boogers. We will be reaching an area of safety soon. Anna, do you require aid? I'm... I'm good. As long as I don't look at... It even has chunks of its shell attached. I didn't know they were so here. <laughs> the troop distances themselves from the fire before stopping to recover. As they sit there in the forest, they begin to wonder whether they are close to salvation or is yet more danger in store for the explorers. Find out next time on Heart of Steel, a Dread Island Tale. Chapter 6 of Heart of Steel, a Dread Island Tale. Exhausted and sore from exploring and surviving the mysterious Dread Island, the remnants of the famous Flying Franklin family tread onward towards the beach. Led by their Assaultron heart, Emilio and Anna try to make the best out of their precarious situation. Heart, I'm tired. Can't we stop here for the night? For optimal survival, establishing a camp by the beach is the best option. Well, how far is the beach? 18 minutes away. And how far is that building from us? Off in the distance, a large cabin sits on the edge of the forest. Warm, welcoming lights dance through the open windows. Look, Hart! There's smoke coming from the chimney! There must be people there. Actual humans. It seems to be structurally sound and would provide adequate shelter. Say no more. Let's go. Filled with newfound hope, the trio races towards the mysterious cabin in record time. Hello? Hello? Is anyone home? Anna, what if these aren't good people? Look around you, Emilio. Don't those fences and guard posts look familiar? Say, you're right. And look there, an American flag. It's the military. We're saved. Who goes there? Show yourself! Oh, thank goodness! Humans! Actual people! Good evening, actual people. I am Hart, and this is Anna and Emilio Franklin. Children? Where did you come from? It's a long story. May we come in to tell you about it? We've been traveling for hours, and we are exhausted. The cabin door opens, welcoming the shivering survivors into its warmth. Inside, they are greeted by uniformed personnel and led into a cozy room with a large fireplace crackling against the far wall. They are introduced to the captain, a tall, slender woman with piercing eyes. Over the next few hours, the children retell their harrowing journey thus far. Oh, you poor wretches, you must be so tired. What rotten luck you've had. 
Huh, just imagine our relief when we saw your cabin. Well, you're safe here. You're with the military, right? You think you can get us home? Unfortunately, we're stranded just like you. Did your plane crash too? Uh, yes, yes it did. Where did it crash? Oh, <laughs> it's nearby. Yeah, back in the forest. You mean we walked right past a plane wreck earlier? A military aircraft would be equipped with a radio. Yes, well, it's broken. Hart is really good at fixing things. Maybe they can look at the radio. Oh, I don't think that would work. In any case, you children must be absolutely starving. Why, <laughs> you're all skin and bones. Harrison, why don't you go get some soup to fatten them up a little, hmm? Sure thing, boss. Why wouldn't Hart be able to fix the radio? We've seen them do a lot of really impressive things. When it comes to our safety, Hart is capable of anything. They do say Assaultrons are extremely powerful. Yeah! Hart would do anything to protect us from danger. Anything? My programming states that I must do everything in my power to care for these children. Well, there is one thing we could do. We'll do anything. If we decommission the robot, we could use their parts to fix the radio. You mean, like, take Hart apart? This seems to be an optimal solution. You can put them back together again afterwards, right? Of course. We'll put Hart right back together again. No! You can't take Hart apart! Emilio, they said Hart will be fine. This is our chance to go home. I don't believe them. I, I won't let them do it. Back with the soup. Harrison, will you please hold the boy back while I work on Hart? No, I won't let you. Emilio feels a rush of energy and wiggles out of Harrison's grasp. He dashes towards the door and makes a run for it, racing down a long hallway. He bursts into the first open door he finds, the adults at his heels chasing after him. He stops suddenly and gasps at the sight before him. He stands in the center of the kitchen, piles of meat and bones scattered on the counters around him. Emilio, come back! <gasps> what is this? Is that... human meat? Danger sensed. Defense is activated. Take out that bucket of bolts, quick! Children, I advise you to reach a safe distance, a minimum of 20 feet. Come on, Anna, through this window! Don't... Emilio and Anna quickly rush towards an open window next to a pile of gruesome chow. Noses pinched and heads held high, they climb out the window and rush to the safety of the forest line. Behind them, they hear the clamoring of weapons against steel, the cries of pain, and feel a powerful shockwave as the cabin before them lights up from the power of Hart's atomic blast. Hart, be safe, please. Don't worry, Anna. Those cannibal creeps are no match for Hart. As the smoke and debris clear, a shadowy figure marches towards the wayward children. Hostile threat eliminated. Hart! Hart! You're okay! I knew you wouldn't let them get the best of you. Of course. My programming does not allow for any injury to befall you. You can just admit you love us, Hart. Your protection remains my only objective. Oh, Hart, we love you too. Emilio and Anna embrace Hart as the warm and wild flames of the cabin reach towards the night sky. With no food, shelter, or parents to help them, their future remains uncertain. However, one thing is for sure, they can always count on Hart to be there for them. Join us next time for another thrilling adventure on Dread Island.